everybody, it's Fallen Princess back with another video for you guys. So today I thought that I would talk about how to get started wearing Lolita. Where do you buy things? How do you know what will fit? Etc. Uh, it's going to be really from the point of view of being in 2019 as I've been in Lolita for over a decade now. Uh, things have changed quite a bit. The places that were recommended to me when I started off are definitely not the same places that I would recommend uh, you to start now. Uh, so we'll go through how to measure your body to really know what will fit you, where to buy it, where what are the most accessible places, what are the most affordable places you can buy Lolita, and how to build your wardrobe. The first thing that you want to do is measure your bust, waist, and hips. Hips are less often used in Lolita because we have a poofy petticoat, but if you're going to wear a blue or OG or anything that is going to be a little bit more fit around the hips, it's still an important measurement to get. Uh, so the first thing that you want to do is measure the bust. So you're going to measure from the midpoint of uh, your bust over here, so the largest portion uh, of your bust area, uh, using a measuring tape that you can buy from the dollar store. It oftentimes even for a dollar comes with a sewing kit, which can be definitely useful to sew some buttons back on or anything like that. So if you don't already own a measuring tape, it's definitely something worth Worth investing in investing it's a dollar but it's still important uh, so I'm going to show you guys over here how to measure things properly so you'll just pass the band from one side of your body to the next while keeping it in the middle and overlapping uh, the band a little bit to get the measurement number for your bust the second location that you want to measure and this is really crucial for Lolita is the waist so the waist is going to be very useful for dresses but especially especially skirts uh, so you really want to make sure that you you can fit into uh, your clothing right so you're gonna measure from the narrowest point of your waist so really the area where it comes in uh, and once again overlapping the measuring tape slightly and getting that number you want to make sure to leave a little bit of room so that you have some room to breathe uh, this is very important because sure maybe you can squeeze into different things but will you be able to breathe and go about your business I also often joke around that you have certain clothing that's for everyday wear and then you have uh, kind of buffet ready clothing, right? So you wanna make sure that you know which of those pieces you can actually go nuts and pick out in. If you haven't seen my Lita breakdown video, you can definitely like go check it out. I explained specifically why skirts tend to be the bane of everybody's existence as far as measurements go. But once you have the waist and the bust, as I said, you're pretty much good to go for most things but certain other measurements are also important. The next thing is of course the hips. So you're gonna measure around the widest part of your hips, uh, you know, once again, overlapping that measuring band uh, to make sure that you get the correct measurements. Uh, as I said, it's less often used in Lolita, but still important to know if you're gonna go, in, go about uh, tailoring any garments. I prefer personally to give a little bit of a gap just so that I'm really comfortable because if you're sitting or you know, you're going about your business, you really might wanna make sure that you have enough room to go on. Uh, that measurement is oftentimes not listed with Lolita garments as the skirts are really poofy, so oftentimes you don't need it. If you're more pear-shaped like I am, that's actually an asset because having broader hips means you need a less powerful petticoat to get the same effect. So think about that. Some measurements that oftentimes are not included uh, in the description of Lolita clothing but could be important to ask. So if you want to buy uh, clothing from a seller or secondhand and this is a concern to you, you could still check it out, which is the shoulder width. Because as you know, oftentimes Japanese sizes tend to be made in a frame that's a little bit smaller. So you want to make sure that your shoulders can fit into the garment, especially if it's a one piece, right where your shoulders st start to fall off. So for me, it would be about here to here, really where you can see that kind of bone stick out. So you're going to take a measuring tape and take a flat measurement across. A shoulder width is especially useful because Japanese brands tend to kind of make things bigger around, uh, you know, the waist and the bust, but they tend to sometimes leave the sleeves and the shoulder width to be quite small. So you wanna make sure that your uh, your shoulders and your back is gonna fit into it properly. Uh, this is mostly an issue if you're buying a one piece, a blouse or a cut sew. And the other thing, and that's the kicker, any Lolita, that has been around for a while will probably tell you that they have at some point encountered a dress that was super uncomfortable around those areas and that's the, the forearm. So you wanna make sure that your arms can actually fit into the sleeves. Fun fact, oftentimes if you custom main garments, they'll adjust like the, the actual you know body size, but 
the, sh the sleeves will sometimes be super tight anyways. So it's still important to know. So once again, it's just measuring from the widest part of your arm, you know, putting the measuring bands, uh, you know, from one side to the next and having it overlap slightly to get that measurement to make sure that you won't end up looking like your arms are stuck, <laughs> you know, or very uncomfortable. Once again, this is mostly useful if you're buying a one piece, a cut sew or a blouse because you want to make sure that you don't end up getting stuck or that the blood will not be drained out of your arms, which has definitely happened to me especially with the older pieces so around 2006 2008 for some reasons like I don't have huge arms and yet I sometimes have trouble fitting into some of these old old sleeves as I'm looking at usually at a Justine collector edition limited edition sets but I still wear them it's just that it's very constrictive so you want to make sure that everything fits fine especially if you know it's gonna be a problem area for you so it's just something that's important to keep in mind. What you want to do is really know what your measurements are because those are listed with the dresses and oftentimes you'll see a range because there's corset lacing or shirring, anything that can really allow for a wide variety of shapes and sizes to fit into the dresses. So it's really important to know where you fit into that range. That way you, you can specifically target garments that will fit you well. So that's the first thing that you should do. The second step that you should take on your Lolita journey is to get a petticoat. So you need to ask yourself if you're gonna go the route of darkness, like this li little fella right here, or the route of light. Are you gonna get a black petticoat if you're gonna wear uh, blacks, dark blues, purples, uh, wine red or are you gonna buy a lighter color petticoat like white or off-white if you're gonna wear pastels creams and all those types of colors as of 2019 i would tell you that it's it isn't really worth getting a japanese brand petticoat i personally only swear by taobao petticoats uh, specifically classical puppets they're affordable, they're easy to get now with all the resellers and the shopping services, and they last a lifetime. For the same price that you could, uh, you know, buy one brand petticoat, you can buy several Taobao petticoats. And uh, I would advise you to get a standard Lolita size one, so that's a little bit above the knee. Now some petticoats that are on the market will actually be T-length, which means that they cater to the longer Lolita dresses. But as most Lolita dresses are still very much on the shorter side, I would advise you to get that length for yourself. Another thing that you wanna keep in mind is that sometimes brands will put what is actually an underskirt but label it as a pannier or a petticoat. So you wanna make sure that in the descriptor, you're gonna have like the layers of tools or ganza to really make sure that it is indeed a petticoat because this is what that would be. And this is an underskirt. As you can see, there's not much poof going on here. It's just a layer of fabric with some extra uh, lace at the bottom to add a little pop to your outfit. They're definitely very useful, but they can't replace a petticoat. So just make sure before you purchase that it's actually what I just mentioned, a mid-sized petticoat that is made of organza and fits the shape that you're looking for. So either a cupcake for a sweet Lolita or an A-line for a more classical or gothic Lolita. Petticoats can come in a variety of shapes and sizes and poof. Uh, you've got petticoats like this that are a little bit more uh, decorative but have less poof. This is great for more casual occasions or if you're wearing it to the office or to, to a family gathering where you don't necessarily need to be as o over the top. But poofier petticoats are preferable for big events. It really adds a lot to the Lolita silhouette. So you may want to invest in a variety of different levels of poof as well. But I would advise you to go for a bigger poof to get that one petticoat first before building and adding extra petticoats to your collection. The third step on your journey should be to actually do the most exciting part. So you have your measurements, you have your petticoat, you're ready to go, you wanna build an outfit, right? So you have kind of two different routes that are open to you now. You can either get uh, what is more accessible. So basically uh, has a English website, you can just click add to cart, check out, use PayPal, bim bam boom, or you can get uh, things that are less accessible but cheaper. So it's really going to depend exactly on you, your budget, your ease uh, of access, and that's how you're going to basically decide which route you're going to take. So I'll add uh, shortcuts to allow you to go to the different sections depending on what you're interested in uh, in seeing down below. So if you just want to skip ahead to the section that interests you, 
please do so now. We're going to start off with what is more accessible. In regards to ease of access, your first stop should be your local Lolita community. You might go, but wait, I live in the middle of nowhere. There is no Lolita community for where I live but you might be surprised. So your first stop should be actually Facebook. Most communities are going to have Facebook groups or Facebook pages that you can actually hop onto. If you are in a more remote location, you might have to look for a broader group, for example, in your province or country or whichever case it may be. Uh, but that should kind of be your first stop because who knows, there might be somebody living very close to you where you can actually try on the clothes. And this is a big thing because it's all fine and good to order stuff over the internet, but if you're not used to how how things fit and sometimes things will look great on somebody else or on a picture but on you it's just a really bad fit for example when I started off in Lolita my first actual Lolita dress was pink pink hmm. I will just put it in emphatic emphasis on this saying it didn't really suit me it didn't work really work out pink and sweet looks great on other people but it's not my jam. But I didn't know that before trying it, right? I was just so excited to get anything Lolita. So that's why your first stop should be your local community because you might be able to try things on to see how it looks. If you know that is truly the style for you because there's a bunch of different sub styles. Uh, so that should be your first stop. But in regards to websites uh, where you might want to purchase. So once again, emphasis, this is for 2019. If you're listening to this in the future, things might change. But as of right now, that's kind of it, right? Um, so in regards to ease of access, Wonderwelt is definitely a place that is very accessible. The website can be in English. Uh, so there's an option at the top that I'm going to highlight using a screenshot uh, where you can select uh, the website to be in English. You can browse, add to cart, check out, and you're done. Other options include also Lace Market, which is a uh, kind of foreign Lolita, like everybody that's not in Japan basically is what I meant by foreign, but please excuse me. Uh, and you can bid like on eBay or uh, buy. Oh, speaking of eBay also, little tip and trick, don't buy Lolita from eBay because some pieces may be legitimate, but a lot of it is actually going to be uh, scams or basically they're going to copy images from a brand and say, yes, this is a dress you we're going to deliver to you. And then it ends up looking like a shower curtain. Also, any of the sites that come out of Milanu, uh, you should absolutely avoid because those are major scams. You're going to pay a high price for a low quality item. So it's very important to kind of, you know, steer far, far away from it. Other brands will also allow you to buy from them in English or even in French, like Innocent World has a French option even, uh, but it also has an English website. Uh, brands like Echantier de Chantilly, uh, Moi-même Moitié, um, you, there's a bunch of different brands that actually offer uh, either a storefront in Wonderwelt or have a, an English website like Harajuku Hearts. I think that's in San Francisco if I'm not uh, mistaken. but. Basically, those types of areas will allow you to speak to an English staff and have easily accessible brand. Taobao resellers are another good idea if you want something that's very easily accessible and hassle-free. You will pay a huge markup compared to if you were to order from Taobao directly or via shopping service, uh, but it is still good options to keep in mind. You've got a lot of different resellers that you can go for, Glitzy Wonderland, uh, My Lolita Dress, Devil Inspired, uh, there's a lot of different options that are available to you. These resellers will basically order from Taobao in bulk and then ship it straight to you from their warehouse, which is oftentimes a lot uh, faster than use using a normal shopping service, right? Um, and all of these options are basically going to definitely speed the process up. If you really want an experience that is very much hassle-free, you can do so. You have a lot of affordable options in regards to Lolita, but they will tend to be less accessible. The best kept secrets are definitely Frill and Mercari. Uh, Frill and Mercari are basically storefronts. Well, it's actually the sellers themselves. It's like, for example, I want to sell my used uh, Lolita clothing and I'm in Japan. I will use these, uh, these types of sites to post my stuff. But then us that are foreigners have to hire shopping services to buy from those platforms themselves as uh, you know, foreigners cannot buy directly from Mercari or Frill. Also, there's only a limited quantity of shopping services that can actually um, 
you know, purchase from there. They need to not be an automated robot, but an actual person that will engage with the seller and speak in the polite Japanese keigo uh, to buy uh, those items for you. I could oftentimes find dresses that were as low as 20 or 30 Canadian dollars on that site. The downside though is that sellers will oftentimes take into consideration that you can fit in any Lolita clothing and not include the measurements uh, listed below. So you might have to look up the measurements using Lolibrary or any research platforms to really know if you fit in it. And if it's still a stressor, if you can't find those dresses, because oftentimes the cheapest ones are really old dresses or dresses that were not so popular, uh, then you might have to forego this option completely. But it was very useful to me to really bulk up my wardrobe and get wearable pieces that I could wear to the office office every day. Another option that's available to you is Yahoo Auctions Japan. Just like the name implies, it is an auction site, which means that you can bid against people. I personally use Zen Market, which is a uh, shopping service that allows you to bid live, so I can get on bid wars with people from uh, Japan directly. The fees are quite low with uh, Zen Market. It's around 300 yen, I think, which is around $3, uh, instead of like the 10% that we have come to expect with any goods. Uh, so for me, it's definitely something that I do quite a bit. Uh, you can't buy directly from Yahoo Auctions to Japan, which is a little bit of a bother, but uh, Zen Market will actually take all of your different items and make it into one single shipment, which will save you a lot of money in regards to shipping, uh, which is always a good idea. Used clothing stores are another option that's available to you. Uh, these will not always include a beautiful English interface like Wonderwelt and will sometimes need Google Translate to allow you to navigate through, but they include sites like Closet Child, Violet Blue, Alice Fururun, Maiden Clothing. I forget there's so many different types of used clothing stores. I will just put them in descri the description below, but you can peruse and buy things on the cheap uh, and it's quite easy uh, to do once you're used to navigating Japanese websites, of course. The last option that is less accessible but a lot cheaper is actually buying from Taobao either directly or via a shopping service. So now it is possible to actually purchase things directly from Taobao when you're in Canada and have them shipped to you. Personally, I would only advise you to do so for anything that doesn't really require some back and forth with a seller. So don't do pre-orders via that system except if you're very comfortable with uh, simplified Chinese and don't uh, use anything that would require you to have a custom made anything because those can be a little dicey. But if you want to buy socks or a simple dress in a standard size or anything like that, it's easy enough to do so and you're going to save a lot of money because you're going to save the 10% that you would have paid a shopping service otherwise. Uh, shopping services will usually be around 10% though it is possible to get them for less. I actually have an, a very old but still valid uh, Taobao Spree uh, tutorial that shows you how to order from them. But since then, I've used a variety of different shopping services, including Taobao Now, who's now Spree Now, uh, Taobao Rink, which I think is Agent 42 now. And I've also recently, uh, and I'm currently doing a, uh, a an order with Binner, uh, which actually charges around 4%. And it's quite nifty because they actually have an integrated search engine only for Lolitas. So you can actually slice on, for example, I want a gothic dress and they will show you a bunch of listings and pages and pages of stuff that you can browse. So if anybody's not comfortable like Googling, you know, translated terms into the search engine or having a list of different stores, uh, then that is definitely something that is very nifty. In the future, I will include a tutorial on how to buy from Taobao directly and how to use Binner uh, and I'll let you know, guys know how that order goes and how satisfied I am with the outcome of it. But those are actually some options that are available for you. The fourth step of the process is actually now building your wardrobe. It all depends on exactly what you're looking to get out of Lolita. Are you looking to wear Lolita every day? Are you a student? Are you Do you work in an office? What type of job do you have? Are you looking to only have a couple pieces that you can wear to events or conventions? This is really going to kind of give you different avenues and different ways that you can build your wardrobe. Because if you're looking for just big statement pieces for events, you're gonna order maybe like huge one pieces, big headdresses, anything along those lines. And you're not necessarily going to be looking to have as many pieces that you can mix and match and, and make alterations to, you know? Uh, so this is really the first question that you need to ask yourself. I'm going to go about this in the way that is a little bit more uh, involved, which means say you want to wear Lolita every day, how do you start, right? Because if it's only for a couple of events, uh, you can buy maybe two one pieces or a JSK with, uh, well, two JSKs with one blouse, like it doesn't really matter, right? Um, because if it's only for once a month wear, 
you don't need to have a bunch of different varieties uh, to create. But if you wanna wear things every day, I would advise you to do the following. So first get a couple of really good blouses. Uh, once again, it depends if you chose the route of darkness or light, but then I would advise you to either pick white or cream in regards to blouses if you wanna wear something that's a little bit lighter, a little bit more pastel. And if you wanna wear things that are darker, invest in some good uh, black pieces that you can really mix and match. Then I would advise you to steer away from one pieces until you are more tenured Lolita. So get a couple of JSKs. So those are the sleeveless dresses that you can actually mix and match with different uh, blouses. I would advise you to also get a cardigan or a bolero. So a little over the top that you can easily wear with a, with different things to add. Even if you were to wear the same JSK and the same blouse, if you were to change the cardigan or the bolero, the look looks different, you know? Uh, I would advise you to start investing in non-printed dr dresses or not so popular dresses so you don't break the bank. You want to get the most out of your experience right off the bat. And to get uh, some nice tights, they don't need to be brand tights, they don't need to be printed tights, just colored tights that will match your look. If you're already a goth and you wear gothic Lolita, you can probably already integrate things that you currently have, though I would steer clear of fishnets for now. Um, and some cute shoes, so in regards to shoes, uh, I would advise you to not necessarily go crazy with the heel. If you want to wear it every day, you want to make sure that it's 100% comfortable. I also wanted to mention that in regards to how to measure your shoe, we are going to show you, uh, you know, on the side right now because I did not mention it during the measurement section and it's definitely an important thing. Once again, you grab your measuring tape and you're going to measure from the tip of your uh, big toe to the, to the complete length of your foot and that is actually going to be your shoe size uh, in, in Japan so for me it's a 24.5 I do know that if the toe is pointed I need to add a 0.5 to me so that I can actually fit into it nicely and then you can add some variety if you do live in a colder climate I would advise you to shop for winter coats off season so that if you order it via Taobao it has a, the time to get to you oftentimes these are made to order and can take a couple of months to arrive so if you order winter Winter coat like in November it might arrive in April or March uh, so that's a little less nifty but yes so very in regards to blouses and cardigans have a couple good statement pieces in regards to dresses and start to mix and match it doesn't all need to be brand it doesn't not all need to be like exactly your dream items but this is going to kind of give you the building block that you need to then further your process along now that you kind of know your measurements where you want to go how to build your wardrobe you might actually want to commit to a style and why I kept this for dessert is that it's fun to explore but it can get very costly to maintain a wardrobe that is in so many different directions and substyles so you might want to decide you know which direction you want to go are you gonna be a dark you know gothic Lolita that's gonna wear some Wame Moitié and Atelier Pierrot are you gonna be a light sweet Lolita that wears Angelique Pretty and Baby the Star Shine Bright are you gonna be a classic Lolita that wears Juliette and Justine Mary Magdalene Victorian Maid and Innocent World are you gonna be a punk Lolita that wears Poudre Mayo it's all for you to decide or also pirate Lolita that wears Alice and the Pirates and it's really going to depend on exactly how you feel, what you're looking for. Uh, I have explored a little bit of everything, though the sweet style tends to be a little bit more cringy on me. Uh, but in regards to everything else, it, it's fun to explore and try things out. I mean, and I completely get that, but it's really important that you get kind of a sense of self and what what is it that you want to to be, to project, who are you, you know? And, and Lolita is very much about reflecting how we feel inside as well. Like oftentimes people will, uh, you know, love bears and they love bears all over the place. They will bear a bunch of, buy a bunch of things that have bears on them to wear in their coordinates or loving Gothic architecture and have dresses with that on. Uh, it's very much about portraying our passions and what we love and who we are. So it's a matter of seeing kind of what are you into? What do you want to portray? Like we're not dressed as somebody else it's who we are. So it's, it's really a matter of figuring out exactly what 
you want to be, who you want to project and to commit to it and start buying things uh, from this onset. So really now I hope that with all of this and this crash course in 101 that you really kind of have a plan set up, you know where you want to go, what you want to buy and that now you're fully ready for your Lolita journey and I hope that uh, the community will be as welcoming to you guys as it was to me and I can't wait to see all your coordinates. Uh, if you want, I would be really interested in seeing uh, kind of your uh, your first coordinates in Lolita versus now and to see all you know everything that you have put together and create and how you've built yourself up uh, so please do let me know comment below let me know if you have an Instagram where I could check it out I'm really curious and I want to get you to know you guys as per usual if you want to follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Elizabeth Fallen please do so and keep in touch guys okay so take care bye